and welcome to SoCal Prep Report. My name is Randy Rosenblum alongside Eric Sotheimer from the Los Angeles Times. We're at Sotomayor High School in Los Angeles. The volleyball meetings are here for the ladies, the girls teams. We're going to find out in 2016 who the best girls teams are in the LA City section. Eric, I love volleyball. You know that. Yes, this is your great day. I like baseball. You like girls volleyball, but I'm I like boys volleyball. I, too. I'm excited because we finally get to have Tom Harp on our show, the Granada Hills coach. We, I called him like every other week. Will you please come on the show? He always says no. He can't escape us today. And we're going to talk about his great player, Sarah Haggy. Uh, one of the best in the city. Yeah, there's no question. Sarah's a terrific player. She's uh, outstanding. You know, she's a opposite side attacker, and she's also a setter for Harp's Highlander offense. She's really, really good. This is the year of some explosive players. Kashana Williams at El Camino Real, and ECR is the team that won the championship last year. They knocked off Carson. Kashana Williams is really good. Yeah, she is like unstoppable when she, uh, the, her setter gets her the ball. I, I just, uh, she was the reason I think that El Camino Real won it last year. So it'll be interesting to see what happens in those Granada Hills El Camino clashes in the West Valley League. As a matter of fact, the West Valley League, I think, is the best league in the city this coming year. Uh, there's going to be great matches. Even though Granada Hills is the favorite, I think everybody can be competitive. Yeah, I do think that uh, Kishana certainly was an instrument of success last year for ECR winning the championship, but they did graduate Kayla Jacks, who is a great leader for them, and another outstanding player in Trinity Goodman. Chatsworth's another team that could surprise, and we're talking girls volleyball today, and we're going to have a number of the coaches on, including Tom Harp, but they have a tremendous hitter, much like Kishana Williams and Mahalia White. She can really get it done. Yeah, Yes, and uh, also Carson, you have to watch out for them. Uh, they're, they're really good. They have a new first-year coach who we'll be talking to. Uh, so I think the city section, and, and then you have, of course, Eagle Rock and Palisades, a lot more balanced than it used to be always at Palisades winning every season. Yeah, I think Pally's won like 28 girls championships. Carlos Gray's back as their head coach. Uh, some players have transferred out of Palisades. We're going to have to see uh, how they do this year. But year in and year out, he's got club players, and he always has a fine club at Palisades. Eagle Rock's an interesting team. They have Jamia Bent, who had nearly 300 kills last year in the regular season. And she didn't play all the year because she concentrates on water polo. And we're still not sure how much volleyball she's going to play this yeah, year. Yeah, that would hurt if she's not able to come. But I understand she's an out outstanding water polo player. Of course, everybody's got to get ready for the finals and they're going to be held where this year they're back at Roy Ball they've moved them up a week uh, because of the state tournament they've changed the division alignment uh, there's so many different uh, divisions and leagues now 13 teams from the city section will qualify for the state tournament uh, there's a number of different divisions so we're going to have an open division it's all competitive base competitive equity and that should make it a lot of fun yeah the eight best teams will go at it and then that'll be fun the finals are november 12th at roy ball so look forward to it you'll be there i'm sure it should be a lot of fun. It should be very exciting. And there's some other fine players, but we just went over the, the ones I really think that have a chance to be City Player of the Year. The young lady at Carson is certainly in the mix. Uh, Chloe Fields, uh, Owens is a tremendous hitter. But I think Kashana Williams and Sarah Haggy, you got to favor Sarah Haggy to be the Player of the Year in the City section. We'll step out and meet the coaches when we come back right after this. Exploring LA County's trails is now a click away. A mobile-friendly trail locator lets you discover all our county's scenic hikes. It features an interactive map that takes you inside the trail. From the elevation to the temperature, what you need to know is at your fingertips. Wondering if your dog, horse, or bike is welcome? It has that too. So discover some of LA's best kept secrets and happy trails to you. Well, this is going to be joyous. We have the opportunity to speak with Tom Harp, a legendary figure in the L.A. City section at Granada Hills. He's coached numerous sports, many-time champion of both girls and boys volleyball. And, Coach, they're already proclaiming you. I've been talking to the coaches here at the coaches' meeting. Your Granada Hills Highlanders are going to be the 2016 girls' open division champion. One thing I've learned, preseason doesn't mean anything. I mean, all the other coaches are... You know, sandbag, and I think, you know, I think it's still wide open for all of us to how, have a great year. However, you have the best player in the city, at least one of the best, in Sarah Haggy, and she's a three-time all-city player going into her senior year. Why? What makes her so talented? Well, her all-around skills are just fantastic. I mean, she can set. Her setting's her specialty, and, 
and uh, you know she's just unbelievable setter. But you know, she's developed her spiking game and her passing game, blocking. So she's an all-around player. She's you know uh, one of the top Granadas ever had. Makes you look good as a coach. Absolutely. <laughs> you know, and she plays on a great club team too. So uh, I mean, she's really dedicated to the game. And Sarah's on her way to Grand Canyon College. Why that choice? What stuck out for her to take her to Arizona? Well, I'm not exactly sure. I think, uh, you know, she was interested because they offered her. And, you know, getting her away from here, I think, is a positive. And she, she likes the campus and the atmosphere that's there. You, you have a lot of players. I mean, we brought up Sarah Haggy. I saw Nicole Debler last year. I thought was a terrific hitter for you. Your team has six hitters that can go up and stick it down just about on every play. Well, um, you know, like you said, Sarah Haggy is a setter opposite. It's great. Uh, Nicole Debler's really improved after the club season. Um, Carissa Bradford's returning. She was a freshman starter last year, so she's proved her game. Ashley Velasquez um, was a team member last year, and she's really improved. So, you know, I mean, I'm really happy with the progress we've been doing in the uh, – you know, in the preseason here. Yeah, I don't know why these coaches are giving you the seat, Todd, because you're in the same league with El Camino Real, which won the title and returns yeah, actually, another. I, I don't understand it either. I mean, but they have everybody's got some fantastic players, and right. you know, we're just right there in the bunch. Speaking of El Camino, they have Williams. She was fantastic this past year. Helped them win a seat, Todd. How good is she as a player? Well, when she gets a good swing, she's tough to stop because you know she's tall. And you know, got a long arm swing, and she can hit over you. So anytime somebody can hit over you, it's tough to defense. Right. I wanted to ask you. You won 12 city titles in the boys' ranks. You won four in the girls. A lot of people thought you might have trouble coaching the girls because you're a tough coach. You like to yell sometimes. So, I, so how has it been able to work out that you were able to do so well? Well, I really love coaching the girls. I've been fortunate to have, you know, just great attitudes and a bunch of sweethearts. So, you know, sometimes I'm tough on them. Sometimes, you know, I. I urge them along in my own simple way, but you know I'm just glad that they've responded to my style. You know, Tom, last year you got knocked off in the semifinals. You lost to top-ranked Carson. Uh, how much of a motivation will that be for this year's team with a lot of the players coming back? Well, each year is different. You know, I mean that that loss sticks in our head, and you know uh, losing the league to El Camino kind of sticks in our head. But you know, you got to move on. I mean, I don't think what happened last year has anything that's going to have to do with how we do this year, really, because, you know, we lost a couple of all-city players. Autumn Stevens left, Sarah Park, both are all-city. So, you know, our key now is replacing them, and then, uh, you know, we'll improve all the way around as a team. It appears, uh, again, early on, and we haven't played a volleyball match yet, that the West Valley League will be the most powerful league in the city, and from top to bottom, it is a very strong conference. Well, I mean, it's been that way every year. I mean, we've always felt that, you know, fifth or sixth in our league is, would, you know, still a quality team. I mean, and, and a lot of leagues that, you know, they might have a chance at winning that league. And it's just, you know, we've got great programs. I mean, TAP, um, you know, always know TAP's going to be tough. I mean, the coaching's great. El Camino's now come back. And Chatsworth, naturally, year you know, you're out there tough. And Cleveland, Birmingham are never pushover. So... It's fun. I mean, I think a lot of coaches like the competition that we have and wish they were in our league. I, I lost the bet with you. You used to be a football coach in 1987. You actually won a city title, and I thought you'd be back coaching football. How come you never came back? Well, it's like days like today when it's 100 degrees out. I'm just too old to go out there, and, and then the artificial turf must be 150 degrees. I can never survive. And, you know, football's great. I still have football strategies going through my head all the time but you know, it's just the time effort and the stress eventually kind of get you so and then i've replaced it with just a great bunch of girls so you've mellowed <laughs> well maybe maybe not you gotta ask my teams that i don't know well we know one thing your team at granada hills this year your ladies will be very very prominent in the city section tom always a pleasure and it's a great tribute to finally have you on SoCal Prep yeah, Report. Out of this one. Yeah, he couldn't get away from us because he's at the meetings. Tom, thank you. We'll have a lot more on SoCal Prep Report right after this. A single ember that escapes from a wildfire can travel more than a mile. You can't control where that ember will land, only what happens when it does. Get Fire Adapted now at fireadapted.org. 
Last year, the Carson Colts went to the finals in the LA City section. They were the top ranked team, and they lost to a very good El Camino Royale squad who they had beaten during the regular season. Daniela Klein was their coach a year ago, but there's a new sheriff in town. Liz Martinez, welcome to the scene. Thank you. Thank you. How excited are you to take over a program like the Carson Colts? I'm very excited because um, I can put my own touch and try and build it and keep the winning tradition that they have right now. I've heard they have a really good program from the past and I want to build on that and, and get them to the finals and win that. How do you build on it? What's going to be the difference in a Liz Martinez coach volleyball team? Well, I don't know what it's been in the past, but they've been a great, Danielle has done an awesome job there. But I, I'm, I love to work hard. Hard work is going to get you far, and just the team chemistry and making sure everybody understands. It doesn't matter if you're the last person on the team or on the bench or if you're on the court. We win and lose together, and that makes a difference. And you have one of the best players in the city, and Chloe Fields Owens. Tell, tell us a little bit about, about her strength. Chloe's a great just all-around player. When you need a side out, Chloe's going to get you a side out. And you know. Say you're down, Chloe will be like, give me the ball. She's an aggressive player. She wants the ball. She wants to win. And she's going to tell her, her teammates, let's go. You know, we need to go right now. So I like that. Right. And you move up from the club ranks to high school. There's a big difference between coaching club volleyball and coaching high school. Explain some of those differences. Differences? You don't have as much time with the girls. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but um, it all comes down to the same thing, fundamentals. you got to teach the girls no matter from club to that. Fundamentals to me is the most important, and you're not going to um, progress or get better if you don't have a stable fundamentals, and you, you go from there. How about dealing with parents? How is that different? <laughs> <laughs> parents are parents. <laughs> so, you know, um, parents, you know, is good. I just try to teach the girls that they need to take control. If they have questions, come to me. Don't have your parents come to me because you got to, you know, they're going to be in this world and going for jobs and things. Parents can't go, go for them. They have to learn how to speak for themselves, find their voice. Good lesson, Randy. Don't make sure that you go through certain people when you're looking for jobs, right? Huh? <laughs> Where'd that come from? <laughs> I want to talk about the players because I know that's what coaches like to talk about. And we talked about, you know, your outstanding player in Chloe Fields Owens, but I was impressed with Raven Green last year in the middle, a young middle blocker a year ago. Yeah, Raven is actually gonna be on the outside more than- You moved her out. Yeah, she's, she's gonna be on the outside. She, she works hard and she's a senior also. So um, there's a few, there's quite a few seniors, but there's some young talent coming onto our team who are some freshmen, so. Um, well, tell us about those players that you're so excited <laughs> about. You were saying, hey, I got some good players that are challenging Raven Green and company. There is. I have um, Ty. She's a freshman coming in, and she's she's definitely challenging. And I like that because I feel you have to have people pushing you in order to become better. If you have people that are going to push you and other, your teammates to push you, that's how you get better. If you just you know think you got your job and it's, it's in stone, then you kind of relax. So I, I like the competition. What have you heard about the crowds at the Sea House? They they seem to get into it at Carson. Yes, you know we've had we had like a little you know summer scrimmage and yes it was <laughs> everybody came out and it was loud. I was like whoa I wasn't used to that so yeah it's pretty awesome I love that. Of course you're in the Marine League and there's Narbonne and San Pedro. Do you know anything about the other schools or you don't pay attention to that? <laughs> Honestly I don't know anything about it, the other schools but I'm gonna try to take care of business. That's what I always tell them. Take care of our business on our side. Are you excited about where your team's at as a coach? I know you didn't see them last year and you know they were good, but do you feel like you have a good team? I do because from summer, we just seen them from the first day of summer workout to now, it's, it's totally different. So I, I'm excited. I'm very excited. And how have you changed being a head coach at this level? You know, we were talking about you playing and coaching at the, at the club level. What's been the difference for you as a coach at a city level? Um, I don't really know what the difference is. I try to be who I am all the time, and I'm very, I'm very involved. I'm loud. I like to cheer. I'm gonna yell at you, but I'm also gonna. You're gonna you. yell at me? I oh, didn't say I'm anything negative. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm, how are you I'm with been, the officials? I'm very, intense. I'm very intense. You know, you gotta ref you gotta respect the officials. You're not gonna get some calls. <laughs> you gonna get any red cards? <laughs> Hopefully not. No, I'm just kidding. No, no. I mean, you have to respect the officials. Everybody has a job. Sometimes it might be a wrong call. You just gotta look and smile and and make sure your kids can move on from that. Don't. Don't harp on that one play because that's what a lot of kids do. you got to move on. Well, it's nice uh, meeting you today. Good luck at Carson, and congratulations on the job. Thank you. I'm excited. <laughs> that's Liz Martinez. First year at Carson, and Colts are going to be a factor this year in girls' volleyball. We'll step out and have more right after this on SoCal Prep Report. So I got this new family, and I don't know what it is about this one, but she can't seem to put down that toy. 
Oh, and she even talks to it. Who's she talking to? Her mom? She talks to her mom a lot. Bet you didn't know Central City won the Division Five championship last year. Race Adolph is back as their head coach. But you might remember, because she was here after they won the title last year. Congratulations. Last Thank season, you. I hear you're going upward. Yes, <laughs> the new uh, competitive equity plan has uh, moved us up to Division Three. And what does that mean for you in terms of competitive equity as a squad? How will you guys fare? Um, I think we're going to be fine. Um, I think I have 10 returners, so I think we're going to be fine. I, I still have a good starting lineup, and um, I have my player of the year is back, so she's a senior now. Who's that? Camille Hawatig. Okay. So she's a left-handed um, setter opposite, so we could be okay. We just don't have a gym to practice, so moving up to Division Three is kind of tough for competitive equity, but we're going for it. What's the key for you to building this program from scratch? Because not too many people know... What is Central City? <laughs> uh, Central City is a charter school. It's been around for about 12 years now. Um, we don't have a facility on campus at all, so we pretty much bus our kids everywhere. Um, I'm passionate about volleyball, so I'm the athletic director too, and maybe that helps. Mm -hmm. But um, the students that I have love volleyball the same as I do, and um, that's how you build a program, with passion. And with the um, and it's also academics involved, so we combine the two and make sure that the kids are academic eligible and they're they're loving the game. So that's how you build a program, passion. Right, and it's an example that even if you don't have a gym, that you if you have a chance to play somewhere, you just take advantage and don't worry about it. Yes, I mean these kids are tough. Like basically, they know they don't have a facility and they just play outside when it's 90 degrees and they take every opportunity they can. They don't complain. They do what they can to be the best they can, and that's that's sports, you know. That's top level kids. How do you keep a team motivated after winning a championship? Um, you work them harder than you did before. I and mean, we set higher goals for ourselves. And now that we're moving to Division Three, that's even a higher goal. Um, we spend a lot of time in the summer training them. Uh, we're now in the weight room more. We have, actually have a weight room at our school, which is kind of cool. So we're <laughs> lifting more. We're pushing them harder. Um, and we tell them that we're moving up to Division Three, And I think it's a challenge for them. And, and they're ready for it. So it's good. You're from Canada. When, yes. when I think of Canada, <laughs> oh, Canada, I don't think of volleyball that much. You think, of obviously, hockey and some Are other sports. Are you kidding? Sports. I saw the no. Olympics. Oh, I know they have some players, but you're from Canada. It's not really a hotbed for volleyball. Uh, actually, there's good volleyball up there. The colleges have great volleyball. Um, the club programs are great up there. I, when I was there, I was um, coaching club, and I was coaching high school, and it's, it's top-notch volleyball up there as well. How's it compared to here? How's it compared to here? Um, On the beach, certainly. There's, we have, they have beach down here, so it really enhances the program. But I think the college level is, a, is about the same really? here and there. Yeah. Wow. yeah. Well, Arisa, we want to wish you the best of luck. Thank Maybe you. another championship in a little higher division, D3. Yes, yes we're looking forward to it. All right, Thank that's uh, Raysa Adolph. You can see there the Jags of Central mm -hmm. City. We'll step out and have more right after this. What's happened in L.A.? I'm Arian Alexander. We live by the beach, so may as well enjoy the beach. Keep cool and head to the coast this week. The World Series of Beach Volleyball brings together the world's best beach volleyball players, chart-topping musical artists, and a host of beach-related activities for an epic week of elite competition and fun in the sun for all ages. The week-long event serves as both an end-of-summer party for beach lovers and a welcome home party for our USA and International Beach Volleyball Olympians. For the schedule of events, check out WSOBV.com. Venice Beach Music Fest is a free celebration of the arts in the park. Enjoy a full day of music, dance, art, and literature featuring top-tier local and international talent. Headlined by founding member of the Chamber Brothers, Willie Chambers, and Woodstock legends Country Joe and the Fish, Barry Melton and Friends. Admission and activities are free for all. Check out VeniceBeachMusicFest.com for more info. Have you ever dreamed of setting sail across the waters in your very own yacht? Now's your chance at the Cardboard Yacht Regatta. Build your own cardboard yacht and test its seaworthiness in a race across the Annenberg Beach House pool. Using only corrugated cardboard and duct tape, go ahead and decorate it, cross your fingers, and hope you can make it to the other side. To register your yacht, visit AnnenbergBeachHouse.com. One of the best things about living in LA are the beaches. So have a blast, remember your sunscreen, and I'll bring you more next week. I'm Arian Alexander for What's Happened in LA. 
Hi everybody, I'm Richard Stray and welcome to the SoCal Prep Report. This is the Southern Section uh, edition and joining us today is Tristan Meyer. Tristan Meyer, of course, is the quarterback at La Mirada High School and last year, Tristan, you guys won a state championship, man. Uh -huh. Congratulations. Welcome Thank to the you. program. Thank you. Tell us about uh, going to state last year. That must have been very exciting for you guys. Oh yeah, it was a, it was a great experience for all of us. It was uh, something different. Uh, La Mirada's never done that before, ever been to state. You know, it was a great opportunity for us to play and win it. Now, was your coach talking about that in the preseason, that there's a possibility you guys might be good enough to go there, or is this just something that happened along the way for you guys? Uh, he's, been, uh, he's been talking about that since day one, since our first practice. He's always been telling us that we're going to go to state and that that's our goal, that's our number one goal, not winning CIF, but winning state was our goal. Now, nobody in this area I know in a long time has went to state since they started having the state bowl game, so that's pretty, pretty impressive that you guys get to go. Let's talk about last season now. Uh, you started the season out, you weren't even a starter. Obviously, mm -hmm. you were good enough, but you weren't starting. But uh, somewhere down the line, you got to get in and just took over. You had some great numbers last yeah. season. Talk about that transition. Oh, yeah. The first three games, uh, I didn't start. I didn't. Um, uh, a guy named Tavaka was starting in front of me. But as, uh, as long as our preseason schedule, uh, we realized that we could use him in a different position, which he was. He was a great athlete. And uh, he went to receiver, which helped the team benefit. And um, it was just after since then I started the fourth game against San Clemente, and uh, ever since then I it's been sorry ever since the uh, 12 game win now, streak. Now you guys start off with a just a killer schedule. This year you have it again. You have a modern day on your schedule. They're picked mm -hmm. to win the national championship this year. Uh, you guys have who else on your schedule this year? Uh, we have Orange Lutheran, Bosco, Modern Day, and San Clemente. Man, that's ridiculous. That's a playoff schedule right yeah. there. You are entering the season with a playoff schedule. Uh -huh. So what's that do for you guys? It helps us. It helps us a lot. It helps us realize uh, what we got to work on. And uh, playing those teams is, this is a great opportunity to play D1 teams. And um, they just to show them what we got and show them what we can do. And um, it just helps us a lot. What was the biggest obstacle you had to overcome last season uh, coming in as quarterback? I mean, I'm sure you weren't expecting to come in, you know, three, four games into the season. Uh, um, the bizarre, there wasn't really a big obstacle, but... Um, I was just waiting for my time to shine and waiting for my time just to get in and uh, I knew I was able to do and I finally got the opportunity to play and, I, and it happened and it worked and showed up. Now let's talk about your brother for a minute. Your brother was a former La Mirada Matador as well and he had a big senior season, ended up going to Eastern Washington on a scholarship and actually won the Peyton Award which uh -huh. is like the Heisman Trophy for Division 1AA. Yeah. Um, what kind of influence has Eric been on you? Oh, he's been a huge influence on me. Um, I've always looked up to him since I was a little kid. Is just watching him play football, and I just grew up wanting to be like him. And this year, he's helped me a lot. Last year, he helped me a lot, and with working with me, working out with me, and having me throw with him, and just helps. He's been helping me a lot ever since I've been playing uh, for La Mirada. Okay, so last season you had what, 33 touchdowns and four interceptions. Your brother was pretty prolific too. Uh -huh. His senior, you guys had similar numbers. Yeah, talk about that. Yeah, uh, Eric had uh, 39 touchdowns, I believe, with uh, four four picks all yeah. season. Yeah, and I had what 33 and four picks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah we play the same. I've been told we can play the same. And um, yeah, as Washington's grow up, has always played like him, and I've always looked up to him. So, what kind of uh, it, this, like is he coaching you right now? Is he helping you out in that regard? Yeah, because uh, you know you're still developing and stuff uh -huh. like that. He must have a lot of wisdom to impart. Yeah, uh, yeah, he's the offensive coordinator for the team. Oh, great. But, yeah, great. He's that, and then he'll also just, after practice, before practice, he'll always have me go up there with a couple of my receivers and just nonstop getting reps about what uh, game influences and stuff like that and just getting game situations and just helping me all around. So how do you guys, like, you're going to play this tough preseason schedule. you got four teams in there. Two or three of those teams are mentioned in the national championship run uh -huh. every year. And then you get in the league. Is it is it kind of a drop off in talent? Do you notice a big difference when you get in there? How do you how do you approach that? Not let let down. Uh, we play we play every team. We uh, we get ready for every team the same. Uh, we got we just got to go in play in our game. And even though we play the D one teams, we got to go in the league playing the same way. We got the same mindset that we got to win and that we got to just do our job. And that's it. Now, are your off-season preparation going into this year, anything different going on with you? you pushing it harder? Are yeah. Are they, they pushing you harder yeah, this year? Yeah, a lot harder because uh, we got a lot more going on since we have a big target on our back this year for right. Winning State. You're so, going to be everybody's Super Bowl yeah. game, man. I'm so, telling you right now. Yeah, Wayne State, uh, we got we to gotta work twice as hard because, uh, yeah, with everyone having a big target on our back, uh, everyone, you feel, everyone you, wants to beat us. You feel more pressure because of that yourself? No, no. Just going to go out there and play? Just going to go out there and play. Wow. 
What other sports you play? Uh, I used to play baseball, but I no longer play anymore. I just focus on football right Focus now. on football? Mm -hmm. Probably a good thing. Yeah. You're pretty good at it, right? Yeah. It's like Mike Trout's good at baseball. Yeah. Tristan Meyer's good at football. Yeah. Tristan, thank you so much for joining us today. Yep. Thank good you. luck on your season. Thank you. All right, Tristan Meyer. Uh, let's take a look right now at some of the games up and coming. Of course, the season's going to start next week for some people, but let's take a look at some of the key games that are going to be played this season. There's going to be a lot of them. Let's take a look. Before we look at some of the big games this week, and let's take a look what happened last week. Some schools started a little bit early because they travel. Edison over Baldwin, Hawaii, 56 to 21. It's got to be a great trip when you got to go to Hawaii to play a game. I'm sure they had a nice uh, group traveling with them. Sierra Canyon out in Los Angeles defeated uh, Orem, Utah, 30 to 20 in a good game. Remember, Sierra Canyon's always tough. They have a great program. And then it was Seguro, uh, Scottsdale, Arizona, 35, Sarah, 20. Uh, Seguro's got to be a pretty good ball club to handle Sarah that way. It was St. Margaret's, 41, Hawaii Prep, 7. And uh, the big games this week, of course, are going to be Bosco is going to be playing St. Xavier's of Cincinnati, Ohio. The game is going to be played at the University of Cincinnati. These are two teams that are in the top 100. Bosco, of course, is ranked number 7 nationally and Xavier in the top 100 so that ought to be a good game especially in the preseason uh, also another good game this weekend is going to be Chandler Arizona is going to be playing at Centennial Corona uh, Chandler in the national 400 of course Corona Centennial ranked number 20 in the nation the following week though you got to mark your calendars because Centennial is going to take on the nation's top team and that's IMG Academy of Florida uh, man those guys are tough they have a great program so it's going to be a good test for Corona Centennial. Uh, real quick now, looking at the national top 20 teams in Southern California that made it, our modern day number six, St. John Bosco number seven, and Corona Centennial is number 20. And it's interesting because modern day and Bosco are both in the Trinity League. So you have two teams in the nation's top 10 coming from one league. It's in Southern California, it's the Trinity League, and that's arguably one of the best leagues in the nation. All right, that's going to do it for the Southern Section edition of the SoCal Prep Report. We're going to go back to Randy Rosenblum. Next week, we'll update you on all the out-of-state games and some of the upcoming matchups as the season approaches. Back to you, Randy. We got a special guest on our last <laughs> segment. Destiny Moore is with us, the setter for Sotomayor. <laughs> you're the senior, you're the leader. How's your team going to be this year, Destiny? Hopefully wonderful. Wonderful. What's going to make your club wonderful? Well, we're underdogs, so we're going to try to make the best of our season. Volleyball just started here recently, right? Yeah. Only when you were a sophomore. What's it been like to, to build a program like this? Well, it's been like stressing. Like it's really been stressful because like everybody looks down on us like, oh, we're not the best, but we try to like be better than what they expect. You have destiny on your side. Exactly. <laughs> How has this summer been for you? Because school just started. Yeah, we actually have first day today. So it's been a good summer? Yes. All right. Sounds good, Randy. Now, we, it, we I, I recruited these people. Don't you? You recruited her onto the set. Yes, they I did. They walk right by, and she plays volleyball, and she's their best Yes, player. I'm a good recruiter. He's a good, maybe you should recruit. <laughs> That's going to end our show, I think, right? We're out of time, I think. Eric, yeah. Granada Hill's going to win the city title, yes, right? Yes, I would take Granada Hill. Over Sotomayor in the finals, right? I don't know about that, but They have Destiny, destiny Moore I know. on their we'll side. We'll see. For <laughs> Eric, I'm Randy. We'll see you next time right here on SoCal Prep Report. So, I'm kind of new here, but I've noticed a trend. My human does this funny thing where she goes around and gets all my toys, and then she hides them in that basket by the door. It's like, hello, that's where you put it last time. You were the worst at hide-and-go-seek.